So I guess the time has finally come. Brandon owns the second gen and this first gen, and he has decided that he wants to sell both of them because he has too many trucks. He has a Ford F-250, um, the second gen, the first gen, and the fourth gen inside the shop. So he wants to get rid of the second gen and the first gen. He's also gonna get rid of his Ford and he's gonna put that money towards other stuff rather than just having two trucks sit, which we use the second gen a lot, but um, we're almost done with the fourth gen, so we'll have that truck to drive around. Um, so there's no point in having four different trucks. Sadie, come here. You better not be in that water. You better not be in that water, Sadie. This is my new puppy, Sadie. She is a blue tick Catahoula Cur. I got her maybe like a month and a half ago, and she is the sweetest little puppy. So what I'm gonna do for Brennan is get these two trucks ready to sell. There isn't much that we have to do to them, but there is some things we gotta do to kind of bring the value up a little bit um, so we can get the most money out of these trucks as possible. We'll go over the second gen here in a little bit. We'll talk about this first gen here because it is gonna take less work than this truck. This truck needs quite a bit of stuff to uh, get it ready to sell. And this one, um, I mean, we could sell it right now, but there are some things we gotta do to get it ready to sell. And as you guys know, I took the injectors out of this truck to put them in my truck and then I went ahead and put them back. That's what was wrong with my first gen, the injectors. It probably wasn't the injection pump the whole time, but the injectors are back in this truck and this truck literally starts with like one crank of the engine. Load up. Now hopefully this truck has enough juice to start up because one thing that we do have to fix is the alternator. The alternator is bad. Um, it's not charging the battery. So this truck may not have enough juice to start it up but we'll go ahead and see. I mean, this thing cranks up right away. but it's looking like it probably is the alternator. A few other small things we gotta do in this engine bay before we can get it ready to sell is to get an air filter for this thing because it has been running with no air filter because it was twin turboed, but they took the twin off and just never got an air filter. So we gotta get an air filter. We have to take this AN line and get a plug for it so we can keep this so that we can actually run twins on another truck and we have a line set up. Um, that line down there, that old drain feed line is tapped with a AN bung, it looks like a 10. Uh, we'll just get an AN 10 plug and plug that off so we can grab this off. But other than that, we may do a little bit of powder on the turbo just so it looks a little bit cleaner. Maybe do the valve covers as well. Um, the charge pies, we may powder coat this as well. Um, and then pressure wash this whole engine bay and get it looking clean. But as you can see from the front end right here, this is how you open the hood. So we may go ahead and buy a cable and run it to the uh, cab. So you can actually pop the hood as normal and you just won't have a wire hanging out right here that will unlatch the hood for you. So moving on to the outside, the outside really isn't gonna get too much. I bought a stripe off wheel to get all of this adhesive off. That's where the trim was along the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase the wheel all that off. And then I may take a polisher and see if I can clean up some of this paint. It is faded, as you can tell from the hood. There's not much we can do about that unless we were to repaint it, but we're not gonna do that. Um, some of this may come off with a polish. I'm not sure yet. Paint isn't in terrible condition, but it's not the best. So we'll give it a little polish, see what it does. If it doesn't do anything, then no harm, no foul. Um, but if it can clean up a little bit, we will be happy with that. So moving on to the bed, we're gonna clean this bed out, get it ready, get it prepped, and we're gonna bed liner it. We'll tape it off right here and spray the bed liner like normal trucks, how they have the bed liner, how they have the bed liner from here in and then to the other side. So we'll get this all cleaned up. Bed liner with some Raptor liner. We got four bottles of Raptor liner. We may need more because on this truck right here, it used to have that flatbed on it that's right there. We are gonna be sandblasting that and spraying that with bed liner so it looks good for this truck. We'll go over this truck, like I said, um, later. I don't think we're gonna be doing too much to the outside. Like I said, the polish 
and the bed liner um, and the stripe off wheel to get all the glue off. The inside, we're not gonna be touching the inside. Inside's good. I got it all vacuumed out probably. Uh, I gotta get those leaves out. They were inside the blower motor. But inside is good. Not gonna do anything to the inside. Maybe re-hook uh, that up. I don't know why that fell. Um, but inside is good. Not gonna be touching the inside. One thing I am gonna take a look at right now is the rear brakes. Whenever you're driving this truck, it drives perfectly fine. But whenever you slow down and hit the brakes, it kind of feels like the brakes are grabbing and you're bouncing up and down. So let's show you what I'm talking about. Today's video is sponsored by Brunt Workwear. Brunt makes a boot for the hardworking men and women, so I decided to give the Marin 8-inch composite toe work boots a try. When I first put them on, I was amazed at how comfortable they were, and the composition toe offers maximum protection without the added weight of a steel toe. These being 8-inch boots, they give me plenty of ankle support, and they're also waterproof, electrical hazard rated, slip and oil resistant, and they meet the ASTM F2413-18 standard that quality work boots should meet. If you'd like to check out Brunt Workwear, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can easily purchase a pair for yourself. And with them only being $175, I'm all about that. Load up. Load up. Good girl. Sure, if it did this before, 
before, but this did it. Oh, did it after. So there may be something messed up with the brakes. So that's what we're gonna take a look at. Definitely something with the brakes. tried and true fuel shot off so this first gen definitely has some sort of hop uh something to do with the brakes when you're driving this thing and you're braking we'll have to take a look at that another day because i don't really have the time to take the axle shafts out right now and leave the truck up there for an extended period of time because other trucks need to be moved in underneath that uh underneath that lean to but as far as other parts for this first gen um, I ordered an alternator. Alternator is definitely the problem because there's not even any power coming off the alternator. Um, so I went ahead and ordered one of those. It was only like 110 bucks. The other day I went ahead and took a stripe off wheel and got rid of all the adhesive, all the extra foam or whatever it is off the side of this truck because when forgot who took it off, but they left all the foam, all that, all those side pieces, took all the adhesive off of there. Uh, with a stripe off wheel and then I did a little section on this door right here trying to polish it see if I can get any of the oxidation off of this thing which is pretty much the clear has failed um, so when I polished it nothing really even happened it maybe helps it a tiny bit but it's not worth going over this whole truck with a polisher to polish this truck out to make it look better you're gonna have to sand it down and re-clear it but as far as this first gen like i said there's not much that we have to do to this thing that we are going to be doing to this thing to sell it maybe we gotta fix these windows i'm not sure why they don't roll down this truck right here we're not really gonna put too much money into uh we're probably gonna have to get new tires for it though because the tires are dry rotted and they're cracking same thing with the second gen over here we're probably just gonna buy new tires for it so the new owner um has brand new tires on it but we're done talking about this first gen you guys will see more stuff that we got to do to this thing in other videos but let's go ahead and talk about the second gen so the second gen holy crap guys so i went ahead and just did a one-step polish on this truck um you couldn't even see your reflection in this paint it was so scratched up so hazy did a one-step polish it took about two and a half three hours to do i didn't ceramic coat it just because the hood needs to be wet sanded and polished and the uh, roof needs to be wet sanded and polished as well. Um, 